super heroic or soup like a super what am i saying What's up, everyone, and welcome to the weekly Q&A. Real quick before questions, we wanted to send a shout out to our friend Ken Knapsack, who has a new comedy album out. It's called In My Day. It's out now on Apple Music, Spotify, Amazon Music, and more. There's also a special edition you can buy on Bandcamp with extra content, including a set that we saw at San Diego Comic-Con that was great. We love Ken. I know a lot of our fans are also fans of Force Center, so we wanted to support him, and there's a link to the Bandcamp down in the description. We also wanted to share another link for something that is unfortunately much sadder, but you may have heard that Shauna Terpsik, the costume designer for Ahsoka and the Mandalorian in the Book of Boba Fett passed away recently, and we were made aware of her GoFundMe page, so we put a link to that in the description as well. Spider-Man of Earth 1218 and Elo Asti ask when Ahsoka will get her staff and what is its significance? That's the final part of her costume that we saw at the end of Star Wars Rebels and we were all making our Ahsoka the White jokes with the, the white cloak but also a white staff. And we were kind of expecting she would make that transformation over the course of the season, but that's still missing. So mm -hmm. where is it? When is she going to get it? Is it important or is it just a fancy stick? Uh, I think it's just a stick. <laughs> <laughs> but I I mean, she's got plenty of time to whittle something on Peridia. So I think the next time we see her, there'll be a little bit of a time jump and she will have uh, made her staff. You know, that's fair. Like, I, I guess if I think about it, at one point, Gandalf's staves were probably just sticks at one point and then he magically imbued them so yeah maybe it's something she makes i'm kind of wondering if it's something that she finds mm. uh the same way like i made jokes about morgan elspeth leveling up and getting a magical item like in D D. I wonder if ahsoka will find this staff somewhere mm. you think it's connected to the daughter at all maybe the it's hard to really tell what the staff is connected to because it's just a stick with a circle on it which the circles could maybe mean world between world stuff but that that feels like a reach and they kind of made it part of the show's logo so yeah i i don't know but i want to say that the the thing will probably have some importance when it's found mm -hmm. maybe they won't know right away Maybe she will just be like, oh, neat stick, and she'll start carrying it around. <laughs> the Force is telling me to carry this stick. Yeah. Maybe, um, what's the convoy's name? Morai. Maybe Morai just flies up with it in its mouth and is like, here you go. <laughs> you need this. <laughs> this is yours now. <laughs> and she's like, oh, okay, cool. Okay, guess I'll carry this. Uh, there is some art that Dave Filoni released. This was several years ago. It was kind of in celebration of... Uh, the anniversary of Rebels ending, and it, it showed Ahsoka with the staff and Sabine, and they were kind of marching through snowy mountains. Th that doesn't have to be anything that we see specifically depicted on screen, but I'm going to guess that she finds it during their quest to get home. Uh, maybe they find it as they travel in Balin's footsteps or something to whatever he's after. Uh, I have no idea what its significance might be, though. Yeah, I don't know. It could be, like, the key to opening up something, like the way that Gandalf puts his staff on the, the Mines of Moria doors, even though that doesn't open them at all. But mm. <laughs> it, it could be something that they need on their quest. I mean, you get a little older, sometimes you just need a walking Maybe stick. Maybe her knees are just bad. She jumps out of Jedi shuttles with no parachute, Quite often, apparently, and Hu Yang keeps saying, "Don't do that." And you know, Yoda had a walking stick, and he could—he was still pretty agile without it. But that's true. He had one, and that's another Gandalf thing to just be like, "You wouldn't uh, take an old man's walking stick." Yeah, it's—it's a, it's a walking stick that probably can do something magical too. <laughs> Maria wants to make sure we saw Loden, Bell, and Ember will all be making their on-screen debut in the Young Jedi Adventures and yeah. Buckets of Blood. I don't know that that's, uh, I don't, first of all, I don't know that they would call him Buckets of Blood in the Young Jedi Adventures. <laughs> Mr. Blood. Mr. Blood? <laughs> His name is Torben Buck. They'd probably go with that. But also, Maybe. We, we don't know Allegedly. that that's him. I did see him, uh, a, a Chagrian in the trailer. Uh, I'm skeptical that that's Mr. Blood, mm. uh, just because I don't think that one was wearing Jedi robes and he was like fighting 
Kai with an axe and not a lightsaber. It didn't look friendly to me. That's, it, regardless, I'm very excited to see some uh, High Republic book and comic characters making their debut onto uh, the Young Jedi Adventures. And, and Starlight Beacon. Oh, and I forgot to put Astalamaru in the in the question as well. But yeah, Starlight Beacon as well. Mm-hmm. And was it Buryaga? Uh, there or... is a Wookiee. So part of the, the episodes they're releasing will include like a Life Day episode. So I think they just go to Kashyyyk. Mm. I'm, I'm not going to get my hopes up for Bury yet. I think that was a Wookiee on Kashyyyk, but not necessarily Buryaga. Okay. But it, it might be. <laughs> I'm just not getting my hopes up is all I'm saying. Well, I, my hopes are already up. Okay. So. <laughs> but it's on you, authors. I, I love all of the reactions, that, including ours. The first thing we thought was like, that's very cute. Uh, but someday the kids who like fall in love with these characters through Young Jedi Adventures are going to grow up and be like, I'm going to read those books that continue their stories. And they're going to see the trauma that Bell goes through and what happens to Loden. And it's going to be a shock, I feel. <laughs> yeah. I mean, most kids have a pretty short attention span, but the ones that don't may remember this until they get old enough to read those books and then just be crushed. And they're going to rightfully be like, oh, Loden Greatstorm. I loved that Jedi. I'm going to see what happened to him. And <laughs> it's just a nightmare. <laughs> but selfishly, I am excited to be able to go back and just see a very lighthearted story play out and get to see those characters again before any serious tragedies struck struck them. Right. <laughs> I, I think this is probably going to be well before the books and comics take place just to keep it lighthearted and fun. Uh, they did say it takes place before the dedication of Starlight Beacon, which once that happens, it's like the clock is ticking. <laughs> uh, so I think it's probably still being built. Everything will be fine. I think our guess was that Burry was going to be the character that they might bring in. So I was really surprised to see that it was not just one character. We're going to get to hear Bell and Loden, their voices for the first time. We, mm -hmm. we got to hear Estala Maru's on the trailer, and that alone just made me excited. We do get Burry, uh, a young Burry, and a couple other characters in the new book that Charles, Soul, and Rosemary? Yeah his daughter wrote together. That is a really cute book. It, I'm, it's funny that I'm kind of like, oh, I wish we could hear Burry's voice. Oh, he would sound like every <laughs> other Wookiee. <laughs> yeah. Cindy asks, what upcoming Star Wars novels were most excited for? Well, just sticking with the High Republic, I'm super psyched to continue with phase three. I will say that I have been lucky enough to read Eye of Darkness already. Uh, I... I'm not allowed to talk about it yet, except, I mean, I can say that I really liked it. Uh, I, I'm super into that era, so now I'm just ready for the next High Republic book and the next one. I think Defy the Storm is the next one to come out in January. Um, it's either that or Escape from Valo. But I'm also really excited about the, the one about the Jedi Council before the Phantom Menace, which I can't remember what that one was called. Oh, yeah. But it, it's interesting that right now we don't, know a ton of what's on the horizon outside of the high republic yeah and i am interested to see if there's anything else to be announced uh i'm actually now that i think about it they usually will announce things at new york comic-con and it's happening right now as we're filming this so by the time saturday gets here there's probably going to be a new answer to this question mm -hmm. for me <laughs> uh despite getting the early copies i have not read eye of darkness yet so that's probably the first on my list of Star Wars novels that I'm looking forward to. Uh, but something that will derail my interest is the new Buffy Audible audio drama that just came out. So I'm that gonna literally read that just first. came out today, this huh. Thursday, right? I'm probably going to listen to that first. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> but a lot of times I will wait until the books are out so that I can listen to the audiobooks alongside reading the actual book. So who knows when I'll finish another book. <laughs> Lauren G. and Cosmic Outpost want to know, when we'll see books about Thrawn, Ezra, Balin, or Shin? Thrawn I, has enough books, <laughs> first you, of all. Yeah, but you don't think there's going to be more? Probably. But let's take him out of the picture for now. No, there's definitely going to be new Thrawn books. We, and yeah, I know. He's got enough. <laughs> we know that Thrawn is like 
Oh, the books or whatever. Oh, he's the book man. <laughs> he's the book guy. He loves books. <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to say. Thrawn has books. He does have books. Probably more coming. He he does have nine books that are like solidly his stories. I, I well ten if you include Outbound Flight, and then you have the Thrawn duology, the Hand of Thrawn duology. So yeah, mm-hmm. he's got twelve books already. I think, and that's not even including short stories and stuff. I'm going to take a shot in the dark and say he's not getting any more books. I think you're mad to say that. Why? <laughs> Do you think Filoni is going to give him back to Timothy Zahn? That's kind of what I'm wondering about. I, I do think that we're going to get Thrawn books eventually, but if we haven't heard an announcement now, which maybe maybe at New York Comic Con... <laughs> we'll get the announcement. But the way that he was brought into Star Wars Rebels, it was like, and also, he's going to be in the show and we're doing a new book. And so it was like this double excitement announcement thing that happened. The fact that we haven't had an announcement yet means I think they're just being more cautious with books that tie into ongoing stories. And we had that moment where Adam Christopher was going to write some book that tied into the Mandalorian. And then that didn't happen Mm. and it got canceled. And I think it's because they were like, "Mm, we're probably going to do a lot with this era, build it up to a movie. So let's not write books in here right now. And they don't want to like be tied down as they develop this side of the universe. So I'm wondering if it's not going to be until after the movie's done and Thrawn's story is over, and then, yeah, Timothy Zahn will then get free reign to write the Peridia trilogy or something. Hmm. I don't think it's going to happen. It, I think it will, but I think it's a, a ways off. Okay. But what about Balin and Shin? Um, I would love a Balin and Shin novel, just one that kind of tells us about what was going on with them leading up to the first episode of Ahsoka, maybe. So just to get a little more backstory from Balin and Shin, I mean, we'll get to see more of hopefully both of those characters in the next season or or whatever we're getting next. But yeah, I I think a a book series for the two of them would be pretty popular. I agree. I, I would definitely love to learn more about both of them. I think we're in kind of the same situation where they might not announce anything book and comic wise until after their stories have wrapped up. Um, I'm going to say all of this and then we're going to finish recording (laughs) and I'm going to check on the New York comic con news and it'll be like new Thrawn books, new Shin and Balin books. And I'll be like, okay. (laughs) And you can just put wrong, wrong, wrong Mm. up on my face for the whole video. (laughs) Uh, What about Ezra? Well, Ezra ties into Thrawn, I think. Like, whatever story they told with Thrawn would probably bounce around with Ezra as well. Mm. And Timothy Zahn has said he has ideas for both of those characters and what happens. So I do think that there is probably... uh, Obviously, they're going to keep Timothy Zahn in mind for Thrawn books. And depending on what else happens with Ezra, they're probably going to throw just, you know, whatever you want to do on Peridia, go for it. I think it's actually more likely that we get like a, a Tales, on, Tales on Peridia comic series. like a, I think that would be cool too. A short comic series because that gives them the, the ability to put something out with these characters to say, hey, this is what it looked like when they first showed up on Peridia, but it won't be fleshed out quite so much if they wanted to change something. Yeah. That feels like uh, something Filoni would do. I think that makes sense. Just a little, like, let's let's give some sparse details, a little five-issue miniseries. Um, something else we could throw out there for Timothy Zahn to write that wouldn't, that would tie into Thrawn but wouldn't affect anything else is he could continue the Chiss Ascendancy story because we know that Thrawn hasn't mm-hmm. been back there in 10 or so years, mm-hmm. longer than that. So we can follow Admiral Aralani and Eli Vanto, see what they're doing in Thrawn's absence, and then that'll kind of lead into the Peridia stuff. Like, I think Timothy Zahn could keep writing just stuff for the rest of his life. I'm sure that would make him very happy. That 
that sounds more likely, but also that feels like a big risk for them to put out a Chiss Ascendancy, basically a Thrawn book with no Thrawn. Mm -hmm. Um, I I do think it would be a risk, but since they did that Ascendancy trilogy with Thrawn, I think they've established enough storylines that the book readers would be like, oh yeah, I want to keep up with that. I definitely want to follow up with Eli Vanto more. Mm -hmm. On to YouTube questions. Andrew Cook asks if Thrawn could get his own series. Why? This, I think, hard no. Hard no. I I will. I can see it in your eyes that you're like, (laughs) you don't want that. I also don't want a full on Thrawn series like live action. I I like Thrawn a lot. I know people love Thrawn, but where his character's direction is headed, it would make no sense to give him his own series. He is not a hero. I agree, <laughs> and that's part of my reasoning. And also my reasoning is that I think he works best in the books when he's not the focus, when it's not his perspective that we're getting. And usually the story is told kind of from Captain Pelion's point of view. Uh, Eli Vanto, Admiral Aralani, like Thrawn has all these protégés that are just around to see him do like the Sherlock Holmes super heroic or soup, like a super, what am I saying? Super. super powered mind thing. Yeah. They're all like, wow, Thrawn, great job again. They're more enthused than you. <laughs> <laughs> They're very impressed. He's an impressive man. <laughs> okay. But I, if you say so. I don't think, oh man, you're going <laughs> to. You're going to get me all fired up. Give me all the hate in the comments. I'll take, I can take it. <laughs> I I don't think the series that focused on him would be as interesting as seeing him pop in and out the way that he did in the original Thrawn trilogy. That I think he was a very effective villain because we didn't see him that often. Mm-hmm. Uh, we saw him when he was making big moves, and it was like a lot of our heroes reacting to, we've never faced anyone like this before. So I think keeping a little bit of mystique around him is a good idea. Joseph Ramirez wants to know if the Battle of Jakku is significant anymore. So we've had two people uh, in the past four years at this point talk about how the, the Galactic Civil War ended at the Battle of Endor. It was Sabine and Finn in The Rise of Skywalker, and people just kind of don't mention the Battle of Jakku. Uh, I think that the out-of-universe reason for that is just to simplify it for people who don't know what the Battle of Jakku is. Mm -hmm. Um, But in-universe, I think it makes some sense that the New Republic might champion that battle over the Battle of Jakku, where it was like, it was a David versus Goliath moment, the rebellion rose up, we blew up another Death Star, the Emperor died, Darth Vader died, like... Even if it wasn't technically the end of the war, it it was the start of the end. And mm-hmm. it feels just like a more heroic thing for them to lift up. Yeah, it's it's better for storytelling purposes. And it looks better in history books. Um, yeah, and, like the, the history book side of it is a good angle. And that kind of stuff happens in the real life, too. Mm-hmm. Like, there will be wars and battles that will say, this is when it ended. And it's like, well, that line <laughs> is a little fuzzy. Um, so it's nothing new. I still think it's a significant battle. It's just probably one that not everybody remembers as much. Yeah. And it's also this thing where it's like, oh, the New Republic kind of got lured into a trap and it wasn't. Yeah. It didn't look good for them. Yeah. Like the more we see about it, like the Alphabet Squadron trilogy, they, they cover it very well in their final book, but it was a trick to get them there to just destroy them and the imperial remnant Mm -hmm. so it it just doesn't look as good for them as the battle of endor does so i could see the the history writers being like "Mm, we're gonna go with endor Mm -hmm. darren o'leary asks why the great mothers didn't notice ezra on the chimera so i thought that was kind of an interesting question and i'm wondering if we can just head canon that they did know and they just kept their mouths shut. I think that is true. Because as soon as Thrawn started blowing up all their stuff on Peridia, 
the camera like pans to them and they like give a look where they're kind of like, oh, interesting that you did that. Yeah, I don't love that, Thrawn. Not cool, but okay. So I wouldn't be shocked if they totally sensed that he got on there and were just like, whatever. Yeah. If they're... Thrawn is so big on acceptable losses, <laughs> we'll just not tell him about this yeah, one. Yeah. <laughs> they're really showing the tenuous alliance between the Night Sisters and Thrawn. Like, I love that moment of Morgan when he says, for the Empire, and then leaves her to die, and she's like, for Dathomir. I think that she is more concerned with making sure the Great Mothers get back to the main galaxy or get there for the first time, but she doesn't care about Thrawn getting back so much as she's like, I have to make sure the Great Mothers get back to Dathomir for whatever they're going to do. And right now, the Great Mothers and Thrawn are working together, but I don't think that's going to last forever. And so, really, I just think that Ezra, it was very convenient how he escaped, and we kind of talked about how he may have gotten away in the shuttle last time. Uh, I don't think the Great Mothers were, you know, using their abilities, their magic, to search for Ezra. They didn't know to do that. But I like the idea that even if they did sense him down there, they were like, oh, well. Maybe they have to be within smelling distance. <laughs> because what did they say? Like, this one reeks of Jedi. <laughs> they got to be able to smell him out. <laughs> they, I think it's more t just tuning into magic. But, yeah. I mean, maybe he was, he was hiding his smell within night trooper armor. That's true. I bet that doesn't smell good, so they were just like, eh, it reeks of Night Trooper, I don't know. <laughs> it could also be, I mean, there's like a ton of like little headcanon things that we could put into play here. Like once they went through the, the mega hyperspace ring and were, and were in hyperspace, maybe their ability to sense stuff like that was kind of scrambled. And they were also in the Eye of Scion and not in the Chimera. So they weren't, yeah, they were not within smelling distance even remotely. And as we've been doing, we're going to round out our Q&A with one of the Star Wars conversation cards. Do, 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 do. Characters. Oh boy. Each member of the Bad Batch has qualities that gives the team an edge in the field. What's something different or unique about you, your friends, or siblings that gives you an unexpected advantage? No sense of smell. How is that an advantage? I can go into places other people refuse to. If you need me to infiltrate a sewer, I'm there. Okay. <laughs> uh, they call me the Trash Man. That'd be my clone <laughs> nickname. <laughs> hmm. I can't think of one for me. What's, like, super unique and uh, helpful? I thought you were going to say and... you were going to use your body again. <laughs> I mean, that's it. <laughs> like in the A team, one of them was just named Face. You're you're just body. Maybe I'm the I'm the flirt. <laughs> I'll be the flirtatious the infiltrator, di the distractor. I mean, that honestly, minus <laughs> the flirting, you are very confident and good at talking your way into places. Yeah. I don't know what kind of skill that is exactly. That's but... an infiltration skill. <laughs> <laughs> I'm supposed to be here. Tech would be over Move there. Aside. Tech's over there like trying to hack into the door and you just talk to the guard and they're like, oh, you're all supposed to be here. Come on in. Yeah. It's a mind trick of sorts. Oh, okay. I'll take it. Over body. <laughs> That's all the time we have for questions today. If you want to leave a question for next week's video, just put it in the comments below or sign up for Patreon to join our weekly Q&A discussion. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on X, Instagram, Threads, Blue Sky, and TikTok. And as always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.